Norfolk relegated to tier four. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully not a sign of things to come for our season. Hello everyone and welcome back to the first episode of season two, the first episode of Norwich City bouncing back. Well, we have actually bounced back and we're in the Premier League and we intend to stay here. Yes, hope everyone is doing well in this trying time that we find ourselves in, but we are finding ourselves on the first day of the new season. The transfers are done, we'll go through them in a second. Before we play our first Premier League match of the season on our return to the top flight, I have a first time of asking, and it's going to be against some pretty familiar opposition because we're playing Bournemouth at home. Of course, Bournemouth, the team that we did secure promotion against last season, hopefully a chance for a good start. But what about the transfers? That's what we care about most of all. Well, let's go through the outs first of all. These are all the players that have been straight up released. The most notable probably is Carlton Morris, who's now at Portsmouth. Decent player, not Premier League level. Didn't see any point in renewing his contract because then he wouldn't really want to leave anyway. Other departures include a lot of the people who were out on loan last season who I kind of forgot were even still here permanently, but Tim Closer has gone to QPR. He's 33 years old. We've got 1.7 million for him. I think from is a, back on FM17, he was an absolute rock at the back, but now kind of declined a little bit. Still some nice stuff, but passing and pace aren't particularly good, so yeah, he's off. Also departing is Jordan Hugill, one of the worst £5 million ever spent in the history of the club we've made a loss on him 3.2 million and he's gone to Bournemouth as you can see so he'll probably score against us today it is just inevitable I mean to be honest pretty decent attributes but just not constantly injured and just didn't want to be here so yeah he's gone and then 4.9 million pounds has also been pocketed for Philip Heiss who again I forgot was even still here he was out on loan last season and yeah to get that amount of money for him I think is pretty good and the last major departure so far, there may still be some more, is Grant Hanley. Obviously, we learned him out last season in January. He wasn't particularly my my kind of player. 4.9 million from Derby County. Again, pretty good. We've actually made a profit on him, which I think is really quite good, considering he's not... I mean, again, great attributes in certain key areas, but there's a lot of issues here in you know the mental areas and so forth, passing. Just not really the level of player that I think we need in our defence. Now, in terms of the ins, speaking of questionable mental attributes, we'll go through this in terms of sort of position going from the back. We've got a new goalkeeper. I said we wanted a new goalkeeper. Um, yeah, we've got Jack Butland in. I mean, the, the positive, I think, really, above all else, £125,000. Absolute bargain. Absolute bargain. Palace have made a massive loss there. Uh, but there's a reason why he's cost £125,000, which I didn't really fully realise until I clicked accept on the deal. Goalkeeping attributes, really good. Handling, kicking, one-on-ones, reflexes, excellent stuff. The issue is command of area of 10, which is okay, but not great. Physically good. The problem really is uh, the seven decisions. That's a bit of an issue. Four communication, that's a bit of an issue. And his determination is completely and utterly shot after his career kind of just sort of went off a cliff. But hey, I think actually he could be... And, you know, he could be really quite good. Could be really quite good. We're going to go with Tim Krull today. But Jack Butland, he's here. I'm happy to give him a run of games if uh, if, if we need it. If Krull's not performing well, pretty happy with this deal. And then moving over to left back. We've got two left backs in as uh, Kintia. Obviously, no intention of making that permanent. He wasn't good enough. And unfortunately, we didn't get Tyreek Mitchell back. I'm sure at some point we'll try to, but uh, not this season. Palace want him. So we've had to get two boys in. First of all, Max Lowe. He's going to be a sort of backup this year. We've signed him from Sheffield United for £775,000. They paid £4 million for him. I think we've got a bit of a bargain here. I don't think he's anything crazy. He's not going to be well, He's not going to be starting for us. I don't think he's going to be pulling up too many trees, but some nice solid attributes in terms of crossing and dribbling, marking, passing, tackling, work great in positioning. What I'd like to see from a full-back or wing-back pretty quick it could, be, could be a decent pickup. The man who's going to be starting at left back for us, though, is this man, Greg Taylor, signed from Celtic for five million pounds. He's already valued at eleven point seven five. I think this could be an absolute bargain. The star rating has got. I, I don't think that's particularly reflective of him. Dribbling again, maybe maybe a slight weakness, but otherwise, I think defensively he's absolutely brilliant. Marking and tackling are fifteen and fourteen. The work rate is lovely, 
Uh, again, maybe issues with his heading. He's not the tallest. Jumping, reaching, heading aren't the best. But overall, I think really quite nice. Some nice, good, positive attributes that you'd like to see in a fullback. I think we've got you know two not spectacular, but two solid left backs. And what about right back? We need a little bit of support there. Max Ahrens has got a bit of an injury at the start of the season. And we've got someone in to sort of cover for him. Sam Byram is still here, but we wanted to get someone else in as well. And we have got Adam Smith uh, on a free transfer from Bournemouth. So he's 30 years old, but on a free transfer. Always have to do that kind of business. He says he's declining. I, I mean, he, he probably will be at some point, but still physically very good. Natural fitness of 17, always going to help. Uh, and again, all the key attributes you really want for a fullback. He has got them all, and I think he could do a pretty decent job as... Well, the backup to Aaron's is going to be playing in the first game against his old club, but uh, for free, you can't complain. And we're really just outfitting every position, really. Obviously, Ben Gibson has joined permanently, which we're very happy with in central defence. Him and Zimmerman are going to be starting for us, but we wanted to get someone else in as well. And that man is John Suter, who's kind of been a bit of a an underrated gem on FM for a few years, as far as I'm concerned. Player I've looked to pick up. We've got him from Hearts for very cheap fee, 1.6 million pounds had a good season for them last year has had a bit of an injury uh, he's got a recurring uh, damaged achilles tendon it is, yeah i think he's got this in real life as well at the moment hopefully that doesn't become an issue but again all the key attributes you really want heading marking passing tackling they're 13s we'd like them to be a bit higher but i think as an overall well-rounded center back he's very solid right footed but can play on the left reasonably well can play at right back if we need him to i think for for such a low fee he's a very good pickup. Now moving into the midfield, obviously Sean Longstaff last time we did extend his loan, he is going to be back. We've got two other midfielders come in as well, both more sort of defensive midfielders, deep line playmaker kind of role, which means Lucas Rupp is going to mostly be playing in the box-to-box -box role, depending on how things go. But the first one we have picked up is Ben Pearson, also on a free transfer, pretty happy to do this one, from Preston North End, already valued at 16.5 million. And again, attributes-wise, his mental attributes are fantastic. The work rate, the determination, the decisions, we like that. The passing is very good, vision is very good, marking and tackling, pretty decent too. Not the quickest, but the, the big thing really for Ben Pearson, if you've ever used Ben Pearson on FM, you'll know one thing, and that is he loves a red card, which I'm not 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 great, not not, not a big fan of, but 17 aggression, winds up opponents, argues with officials, and dives into tackles. It could be an issue. It will be an issue. He got three red cards in the championship last season, which is more than the entire uh, the entirety of our team got. I think we only had one red card all season, so could be an issue. We we don't get stuck in, but but Ben does, so he's not going to be starting for us. But the man who is going to be starting for us is Ronaldo Vieira, who we have is, is our most expensive signing at a whopping seven million pounds. We've gone a bit a bit budgety. And we have picked him up from Sampdoria. He spent last season on loan at uh, Hellas Verona, former Leeds United Academy graduate, moved over to Sampdoria. They made a little bit of a profit on him. Again, there's a lot to like here. Not Nothing truly spectacular, but just well-rounded, solid. He's got the marking, the tackling. He's got the passing, the vision, the work rate. Good dribbling as well, so he can play further forward, and I think he could do quite well at that. I think a lot of the guys we've signed just sort of solid, improvement players the players that will do a job and keep us up this season and then what about the wide areas i did want to get someone else in we've got a lot of good options on the wings obviously Cantwell and buendia will be playing pretty much most of the games and you know a lot of the backup guys hernandez dow pretty good they, they you know they did quite well last season but i wanted to get someone else in just to sort of be that kind of bench winger option and uh, we've got emil smith rowe on loan from arsenal for the season he thinks he's going to be a regular starter so we will be annoying Mikel Arteta, if he's still in charge, he is still in charge, at least in this universe. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's simply, again, really nice uh, acceleration and agility, pace, what we like to see. Finishing is okay, better than a lot of wingers would have. Crossing, dribbling, technically very good. Passing as well. Predominantly plays on the left, but he can play on the right as well. Can play centrally if we need him to as well, which could come in pretty useful if we're switching up things if the game isn't really going our way. Yeah, not on crazy wages for the season makes makes some sense to me and then the final signing who's going to be playing a big role in the first team this season i wanted to get another striker in we had the best striker in the championship last season so i thought who better to back him up than the second best striker in the championship last season adam armstrong joins us from blackburn rovers for again 
really good deal. 6.5 million pounds could rise to 7.75 depending on appearances and things like that. But well, I think I think he got 16 goals in the championship last season matching what he did in the previous real life season. He he didn't get in the championship team of the year despite getting this. They they picked Ivan Tony, who was the other option I considered, but he would have been considerably more expensive given Brentford got promoted. But so yeah, finishing composure pretty decent. Physically very good. Acceleration and pace, I really like that. Passing and strength could be a bit better, but I think as a good backup option to Ida, and again, competing with Pookie as well, I'm happy with this. So those are all the major signings, of course, stretched across two pages. We have picked up a couple of youngsters as well. Uh, Finley Robertson for 2.7 million. He could actually play in the first team quite a bit from Dundee United, maybe a little bit pricey, but uh, a lot of potential to grow into in midfield. Could could find himself getting a bit of game time, certainly in the Cups. Also, Ricky J. Jones has joined us for £200,000 from, well, relatively local side, Peterborough United. Looks like, again, some decent potential there. And we have also signed our first regen, another striker, Patrick Lack, has been picked up from Cardiff. Again, I think he's got decent potential. Only £375,000, 15 finishing. I like that. Nothing particularly crazy, but the 16 determination looks quite good as well. Again, could develop, and you know, if he doesn't do well, we can at least sell him on. Now, if I was going to use one word to describe this summer, it would be frustrating. We have signed a lot of players. We strengthened in the areas that I want to strengthen, but kind of maybe not the caliber of player that I would have liked to have brought in. We could have spent a bit more money and maybe got some more guys in, but the difference in quality wouldn't be enough to really justify it. So we have gone relatively budget for most of the signings, but just to give you an example of what we've kind of had to deal with this season, I think the, I think the biggest issue we've had uh, over the summer has been reputation. Harry Wilson, for example, a player I very much wanted to sign. Uh, we had a bid accepted by Liverpool. Wasn't even interested in talking to us. He's gone to Wolfsburg. This is a man who was spent last season on loan in the championship. Wasn't even interested in talking to the team that won the championship and is now in the Premier League. Similar story with this man. Jesse Lingard has left Man United on a free transfer. He's gone to West Ham United. They got relegated. They're in the championship next season. He did want to talk to us, but he wanted £75,000 a week. Well, he's joined West Ham on 27000 So, okay. And then the most baffling one of all, Danny Rose has done exactly the same thing as Jesse Lingard. He's left Spurs. He's joined West Ham on a free transfer. Well, he did talk to us. He did agree a contract with us. A contract which was longer, a higher wage, higher bonuses, better squad status. But he's rejected us to go to West Ham. I mean, Danny, it's not, it's not AC Milan and it's not even... It's not even really, it's not further north than Tottenham, is it? At least Norwich is slightly higher up the map. But overall, I'm pretty content with what we've done. I think, it, you know, we've got enough about us to be able to uh, to stay up this season. In terms of uh, how the media are predicting things, if we look at the old season preview, it's, well, uh, we're predicted to finish in 18th, which is, I mean, it could be worse, couldn't it? It could be worse. Above Brentford, which, you know, makes sense, and above Crystal Palace as well. Uh, Bournemouth are apparently predicted to finish in 13th. Bearing in mind that we finished what? Uh, let's see. Yeah, we finished 25 points better than than last season. So I'd be disappointed if we if we didn't finish above them this season. Certainly by any margin like that. So the team for this one then opening day of the season at home against Bournemouth, a team who, as we've just seen, we finished considerably above in the Championship last season. And this is who's going to be lining up against them. We're going to go with Tim Krul in goal for this one. As as said, um, I mean Butland is there. If we, if we need him, if Krul's not performing particularly well. Greg Taylor is going to be at left back for us. Gibson and Zimmerman, of course, resuming their partnership on a permanent basis in the middle of defence. Adam Smith comes in against his old club as Max Ahrens is injured. Not sure on the best combinations in midfield at the moment, but Ronaldo Vieira is going to be anchoring the defence for now with Sean Longstaff and Marco Stiepenman ahead of him. Todd Catwell and Emi Wendia and Adam Ida, of course, are the front three. Can we get three points? That would really start the season off nicely. Obviously, we did lose to Bournemouth at Dean Court, but we did beat them at home. That's what got us promoted. They've made a few signings. Seamus Coleman is in. Okay, great. And, of course, uh, jo Jordan Hugill. So, he starts. He's probably going to score. Stuart Dallas as well. And then plenty of the players that they already had in the Premier League anyway. Right, people are looking nervous. I mean, I expect to win today because we literally played this game a couple of months ago, a few episodes ago. And we won, so do that again. All right, good to see Carrow Road looking full. We want to be packing it out every single week because then if we can stay up and we can save some money, then uh, Delia will agree to expand the stadium. I think longer term, improving the facilities is going to be key to this. We have improved the youth recruitment and the junior coaching over the summer. 
uh, and you know we'll look to improve the facilities as we as we go as we bank that Premier League TV money. And what a treat the fans are getting! Finally, a highlight. 33 minutes in, free kick from Buendia, which Benitez clutches out of the air. That's that's all we've seen so far. He's going to just punt this forward to Jordan Hugo. Well read by Greg Taylor. Intercepts, prevents the inevitable there, and we can now look to strike Camwell on the left hand side. Lays it off to Taylor. Good cross from him. Would would really sort of be a great start. He finds Steeperman, gets it back, ball across to Cantwell, great finish. That's what I like to see. A new man getting involved already, an assist from Greg Taylor, gets a bit of a luck in terms of the bounce, but slips it across. Cantwell, great finish. Benitez literally looking in the wrong direction. Jason Tindall, not happy with that, but Cantwell opens his account for the season, as do we. Taylor with the throw and finds Cantwell, knocks it back to him, and now he drives in field. Chips the ball in straight to Stuart Dallas, though. But uh, the punt forward from him is well intercepted by Zimmerman. And now maybe we can look to go down the right-hand side or not. Ronaldo Vieira on the ball. Adam Smith. Oh, oh, seen all the new boys in action. Vieira. Just sort of... We're not We're not just doing anything... We're not doing this stupid passing around at the back, are we? Can we actually progress the ball forwards, please? There we go. Here's Adam on the ball in the Premier League again. Nice to see. Hopefully he can adapt well. Adam Smith on the right-hand side, ball across. It's he's adapted very well indeed. Couldn't couldn't really miss, but we love to see it. Very patient build-up, very sensible build-up, not giving it away. Being being uh, very productive. Adam Smith against his old club, driving run force from him, gets a bit of a deflection off Stuart Dallas, and then, well, I'm not sure what Benitez was doing. And Ida literally he gets his first Premier League goal, but not, didn't really do didn't really know much about it, but. Uh, Again, he opens his account as well. And at half-time, things are going very well. And I'm very pleased. Always a good uh, marker to get your first win of the season on the opening day. And, um, well, it's, it's going well so far. You have to be optimistic about staying up. We did equal Reading's record of 106 points in the championship. And when they got promoted in their first season, they, they finished like 8th, I think. Nearly qualified for the uh, Europa League. So, I mean, that's obviously good. I mean, they did get relegated the following season. So let, let's not emulate that. Of course, now we're back in the Premier League. Uh, only, only three substitutes, which, you know, is a source of uh, contention. But uh, we've made all three. We didn't need any more. The job was done in the first half. Pretty much two highlights, really, in the whole game, wasn't there? Uh, pretty much just a couple of highlights in the whole game. Very clinical. Todd Cantwell, Adam Eder, continuing where they left off in the Championship. 2-0 win. Three points on the board. Very nice indeed. You have to be happy with that win, right? Yeah, I, I am, because you guys predicted them to finish in 13th. Did you even watch anything that happened last season? Not only were we clinical as well, Bournemouth didn't have a single shot on target. So defensively, very good as well. And that makes great reading. We're in sixth place. We're, we're, we're going to Europe. There's there's 37 games to go, so I think we, we shouldn't count any chickens anywhere near this early. But a great start indeed. You can't really argue against that. Greg Taylor doing well on his debut, picking up an assist as well. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you, but there's literally no negatives about what we've just seen. And uh, that is going to be where we end things off today. I mean, let me know what you think down below, the new signings. I mean, I know there's not really anyone sort of massively established or anything like that. But I think that all of the deals, very sensible from a financial perspective. We don't want to be wasting any money. Lots of young players who have a lot of potential and development and also potentially sell on value as well. I think I think it's improved the squad. Let me know what you think though. Make sure you leave a like on the video as well. Make sure you subscribe so you do not miss how we get on in the rest of the season. I think we'll go a little bit further in. And there's not many games in September. I think international football kind of takes up a lot of the time as well. I think what we're going to do, we're going to go a few games in. And I think what we'll do is we'll come back a sort of, I think, yeah, end of September. Burnley, Southampton to me. Because these are the kind of games that we need to be winning if we want to be staying up. The board want us to steer clear of relegation. So they're, they're not even entertaining the possibility of relegation. We need to be staying up. We're playing a few tricky games in these first few matches. United, Liverpool and Arsenal as well. So I think, yeah, Burnley, Southampton, they're the kind of games we want to be doing well in if we have, first of all, ambitions of staying up and certainly any ambitions beyond that as well. So that's where we're going to be back next time. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you then.